So there it is. I think this thing looks incredible. I hope you guys agree. And uh, I, I'm, I'm super excited to get this thing on the road. We're almost done with it. The next step for me is going to be the seat, which uh, the day this thing video, or the day this video goes up, the day that you might be watching it now, I'm taking the bike to go uh, get the seat made, and we're going to be moving forward pretty quick after that. So I want to tell you guys how I got to this point, how we came up with the paint. This is actually, if you didn't know, this is a customer bike I'm building for somebody. And uh, me and this customer, we, we collaborate really well. We have a lot of like fun ideas that we bounce back and forth with each other and uh, a lot of creative juices. It's, it's a lot of fun to, to, to work together on stuff. And so <clears throat> this particular customer, he's, um, think of it, he's kind of loud. Like he, he wears a lot of color. He doesn't like dull things. He likes to uh, accent stuff. He likes to match. He likes to, it's, he, everything in his life is like very colorful and has like a soul to it. It's really cool. So the bike has to match. Now, we know we could do black or something like that as like a, a, as a base color or dark colors, charcoals and stuff, but you know, there's really no risk in that. And even though you know that it would look fantastic, it would look aggressive, um, we, got, we got to make it pop a little bit more than that. So another, uh, another idea was blue because obviously we have blue anodized wheels. But, you know, talking with the painter, you're never going to really match an anodized color on paint. So, we decided to not go that route. I actually have a rendering uh, in all of these colors. I'm going to put them up periodically here. Um, decided against blue just as like a... I don't know. It would look cool, but I think it would be very easy to get wrong. It might be too much. So, instead of doing red, might have been too, too much red on the bike, we went with white very crisp, very clean, and then that just allowed the color that we put on top to just pop and everything matches. So the shape itself, you guys are, I'm assuming you guys recognize right off the bat as the Honda wing. So it's a, it's actually the first thing I drew on the bike or on the tank when I went to draw these on paper. And um, I got it pretty much, pretty much first try. So I'm just looking at the wing and I wanted to pick up on the pocket of the tank I didn't want to do a decal or anything like that, or, or just a basic line. I wanted to have something that could that could incorporate the shape of the tank, the red from the engine, but also like the, the valve cover angle as compared to the tank. Obviously you have like kind of a forward angle of the valve covers being that the heads are rotated. So the wing just is like, duh, you know, it totally worked. So having the lines that come up, to match the valve cover, you split that, you have the feathers, and then just the, the hard line on top and back just work perfect. So um, those renders, you know, it was like these were these were really cool looking on paper, but still kind of hard to see. But uh, I had somebody reach out, really awesome. They actually did these renderings for me. And uh, it really allowed, you know, between me, the customer, and the painter, all like having a powwow, you know, just it, it really allowed us to kind of hone in on what we wanted and uh, and where to go and be confident in our decisions that we're making. So none of us could be happier. We might add a little color in the in the back on the tail or whatever, but for the most part, I'm gonna leave it right, I'm gonna leave it how it is now. Wait till we get the seat done and uh, see where we go with that, because who knows? I got this drawing here. We might end up doing like red ultra suede or something for the seat who knows um but it's gonna be good it's gonna be killer whatever it is i have full confidence in my in my upholster who has who i've used almost exclusively for few, you know over a few years now but anyway this thing's honing you know we're we're getting close now and uh i i had to show you guys the paint this has been a hard one to keep in the bag i want to post pictures so bad and show you guys because it's such a it's such a gorgeous bike but yeah, now that you guys have seen this, you're gonna see more updates on this bike. So it's gonna be the, the, the nickel and dime type stuff to get done after this and just painting a few little brackets and then dialing in the carbs and you know, just uh, the, the final tinkering and things like that. But we're real close. And uh, after this, you know, we're gonna start hitting shows with it and uh, really promote it, do photo shoots and stuff. But yeah, this is a big step forward, so. Um, I know you guys have been watching this build series for quite a long time. I know it's taking me a long time. I have a lot going on. I have a lot of bikes and building, you know, other customer bikes and stuff like that. So anyway, I appreciate you sticking with me this long. And I apologize for the, the gap in CX-500 specific content because I know it's been a long wait. 
But anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Uh, if you haven't, or if, if this is a new video for you and this is the first time you've seen this bike, definitely go back through and uh, you know check out some of the other videos on how it got to this point because I've shown almost every single thing I've done to the bike in depth, in detail as I went. So there's a lot of content building up to this point. And there's also a lot of content besides this bike on the channel. So if you guys are finding this interesting and you check out a couple of the videos, you find those interesting, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, again, I'm going to wrap it up here. I appreciate you watching and hope to see you in the next video.